All right, you're still watching ways now. Multiple um, cirrhosis day um, is observed on the 30th of May every year to create awareness among people to accept and support those affected by this um, serious ailment. Um, this ailment is an autoimmune disease in which the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord is severely affected. It is one of the most common disease of the central nervous system. And today, 2.8 million people around the world have this disease. Multiple cirrhosis or MS, as you call it, um, could impair the patient's ability to walk move various body parts and may even lead to vision loss. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I know anyone that, uh, that maybe in close proximity that have this um, disease. But I mean, the closest that has happened, you know, was when my grandfather had a stroke. Ah, it was not funny. Like having to see him partially paralyzed and he's not able to do the things he used to do, you know. So I don't know how people cope with um, some kind of ailment. It's, it's really, really a tough thing. I don't know. Norma or um, um, Uti, do you have any, any experience with this ailment? No, personally, no. Um, I think just from my mom's time um, as the medical professional, just seeing some of the patients, it's, it's quite a debilitating disease over time. Um, and just to see how people, you know, manage it, it's to see how, you know, it breaks down sort of the, the nerve endings and, you know, the impact that it has on people's physical abilities. It can be quite, quite distressing to see actually. Um, but, you know, for days like this, it's always great to be able to raise awareness about um, diseases like this that most people, you know, if you say MS, most people sort of know um, and have an idea what it is. But I guess we never really give a second thought to it if it's never really crossed, you know, your, your, your close person that you know. Um, but it, it is quite a difficult one to manage. Absolutely. All right, so let's quickly run through our news like um, a minute each. Um, Angie, let me come to you first. So my story this evening is, a, is quite a funny one. It's a, an incident that happened in is an incident that happened in Brazil during. So it's a story about an enraged husband who smashed the beauty pageant winner's crown. After the fight, got uh, sec, came second, came second place. So um, if I don't know if we're going to play the video, but the video shows, you know, they were about to, you know, just at the point where... Yeah, now the winner. They're about to crown the new... Uh, queen. Queen. So, um, so, it's a, so he, you know, they announce, the crown is in the middle, and then they announce, and then they're about to... Because the wife did not win. They were about the man was enraged. How can you say my beautiful queen? <laughs> literally went berserk on stage you know he took the crown threw it on the floor took it again threw it on the floor and he literally had to be escorted out of the i think he should be arrested and he should and be charged yeah, for something take legal action and he was trying to actually pull his wife off stage mm. you know when i saw that video the only thing i'm saying is that god help this wife because you don't enter one chance with this marriage that's not a husband you're really going to explain why you came second it's not even that, it like, was it's not even that, like, how can you not control your anger that you, to, to that extent? That means, if I mistakenly offend you in the house, problem, go there. Now, my body, you go take on that. Because it's true. I mean, for me, when I saw it, I said, this man must be a wife beater. Nobody can tell me anything otherwise. Yeah. When I saw that video, I said, ah, must be a wife beater. It's quite violent. It's too violent. He, 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 it was too extreme. Ah, uh -huh. kilo day. You can be upset, maybe due to the emotions and all the energy that you have put yes, into... Yes, now, now destroying the world. crown. Ah, uh, no. That, that she should run for her life, fight for a divorce. Because I can't... In the video, you see... He pulled her, that's he what I'm saying now. Out, he was pulling her out of the stage and let's By go. The hair. Uh, uh, so, was, that, that is domestic violence right there. <laughs> a very disturbing video. <laughs> Nama, what did you fight for us sitting <laughs> All right, for me, it's about the 
fuel queues that have resurfaced in Ibadan as residents engage in panic buying. And uh, oh, you had mentioned the fact that this panic buying is causing so much uh, trouble already because now uh, the queues are beginning to resurface everywhere. It's not just in Lagos, but also in, in Ibadan. And um, this has come as a result of the after effects of the removal of the subsidy and, of course, with the announcement made by the president yesterday during his uh, inauguration. So some residents are already feeling the aftermath. I mean, people are complaining. The prices for um, transport, local transport, has greatly increased. The fuel uh, um, queues are getting longer. And uh, people are already wondering how they are going to be able to get to work or get around. I mean, it's really already causing some level of panic. So children are finding it difficult getting to school due to the queues that are all over the Ibado metropolis. So already we can see that this is already taking, uh, it's going full swing. Or, and this is just day one into that announcement. Mm. You can imagine what the rest of the week will hold. I think we should just uh, plan for, uh, yeah. That's part of what we want to discuss. So just prepare yourself. Uti, your story, please. All right. So my headline basically says, I may feel a meet Tinubu at Castle Rock. So the story reports that um, the president arrived at the villa at 2.30 this afternoon where he was received both by the vice president, um, Kashim Satima, and um, Mefile, the CBN governor, and Mede Kiar, who is the GMD of the NMPC Corporation Limited, um, some other senior members of the government also being present. Uh, but the main story basically just talks about the fact that the assumption is that they met to discuss, of course, the rising fuel queues, um, as well as the um, one of the charges that the president had made during his inaugural address around you know, find the exchange rate, which is believed to be the um, the topic of conversation between himself and the CBN governor where he's been charged to um, to look into that and work towards a unified exchange rate. The governor left apparently without addressing the media, um, but um, what's it called now? The CBN uh, GMD, um, sorry, pardon me, the NPC uh, GMD did go ahead to address the media um, to give some insight into the conversation and pretty much saying that the policy around, also around the um, new cashless and error policy also should be looked into. So um, it doesn't give us much um, information, but basically that um, both of those um, senior officers or officials met with the president today um, and ideally thinking that they're discussing what are these two top issues at the moment. Okay. Um more stories on this, um, what's it called, fuel subsidy. So I'll just quickly take mine because, I mean, that's a conversation for today. So we'll just don't, so that we don't overflog it. Um, I, if you recall the incident um, of a young boy or a young man, rather, that was, um, con there was a controversy, controversy around the circumstances of his death at um, Hilton Hotel in Ileife on the 6th of November in 2021, um, three days after he had lodged at the hotel, um, to sit for an examination at the school uh, at the school distance learning center in Moro, uh, he was um, subsequently buried by the hotel management in a shallow grave without the knowledge of his family and police. Right. Um, so today there was a sentencing. Um, so um, the court has sentenced the popular Oshun hotelier Raman Adedoyi to death by hanging. Um, Adedoyi was. A, Owner or he is the owner of the Hilton Hotel in Leife, and uh, he's been sentenced to death over the happening of the murder case of the master level because he was a master level student at the Obafemi Awolo University. His name was Timothy Adigoke, and the court, um, uh, the presiding judge, Justice Oye Bola Ojo, found Adidoi and three of his staff guilty of murder and conspiracy um, today, and um, the reports that. Um, 
he made the declaration while reading his judgment during the ongoing trial of um, um, Adidoy and the other su suspects. And I think some of them were given like life imprisonment, some were given. So it's just multiple, um, what's it called? Multiple sentences, all um, for, the, for the four of them. So um, um, I, I was listening to the news and he, the attorney for the, um, the victim that passed um, said, okay, at least they are happy that even though it might not bring the, the young man back to life, but at least justice has been served. So looking at the timing, November 2021, uh, six, November 6, 2021 till date, I mean, I think, you know, we are getting better with um, delivery of timing. We hope it can even be shorter than, than you know, those long lengths of um, what's it called trials that are always delayed. But I'm happy that, you know, justice has been served. Well... The story was the boy lodged into the hotel and he was supposed to write his exams. He was a master degree student and all of a sudden, you know, how can you, somebody die, you bury the person, even without the family or any, nothing. And it was a hotelier. You know, so they were arrested and now today they found them guilty. I believe that they must have carried out the thorough investigation before coming to that conclusion. All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, we want to discuss... Um, What's it called now? Subsidy, right? And how we should handle the matter. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.